Namaskar everyone. Thank you for joining in today. So happy Monday everyone. Hope you're enjoying the working week. I see our Romanian friends are joining, so that's beautiful. Thank you everyone. Thank you for joining in and thank you for, for coming together with me as we go deep within and send these beautiful vibes to the world around us. Thank you everyone. Always a joy to see you join in. It's a beautiful and sunny day here in Trinidad and Tobago. And the time check here is now 8.26. It's a very fine Monday. So I want to talk a little bit about what I spoke about yesterday morning in my talk. About spiritual being in a human experience. Just to elaborate a little further. It's extremely important to be awakened to this, that we are spiritual beings in a human experience. If we can really and truly understand this, it can make the human experience so much better. How do we go into a deeper understanding of this? This has two parts. First, it's understanding who we really are, because we are not the body, we live in the body. Does that make sense to you, that we are not the body, but we live in the body? We feel within us the awareness of eternity. We, we feel deep within our core that we are not going to die. That's a deep feeling, or oh, we don't want to die, and that's because we, we don't die. The feeling that I don't want to stop existing, or I don't want to... I don't want to die. It's because that's what we are. We are immortal. We are deathless. But we are clothed in a human body. We, we are embodied in this, this, this animal body. And I tried to communicate that feeling to you, that awareness to you in every possible way, that you're not the body. So the challenge is how do we as spiritual beings live masterfully in an animal body? Does that make sense? How do we as spiritual beings live masterfully in an animal body, with an animal brain, a nervous system, and with the primal instincts of the animal body. To mate, to eat, to drink, to secure, to survive, survival of the fittest. How do we live? How do we live masterfully in the human experience? And the most important thing in that is knowing your spiritual being, knowing who you really are, going deeper than the animal instincts or the awareness of the animal instincts or the consciousness of animal instincts, going a little deeper. And that requires a shift in consciousness, an awakening to a whole new you. That's called a rebirth. The whole new you, it makes a big, big difference when you can go there. Do you feel that? Do you feel your awareness as a spiritual being, as a deathless being, as a being with more powers than just what the human body provides? Human body gives you physical warmth, it gives you physical energy, 
but your soul gives you pranic warmth and it gives you pranic power. So that means that it empowers your mind. Your mind is going to stay with you. It's a soul quality. Your emotions are going to stay with you. It's a soul quality. The power to drive the gut, it's a soul quality. The power behind walking, speaking, digesting food, standing up, moving. They're all soul qualities. They're soul powers. In the yoga, they're called the prana vayus, the pranic currents. And the senses are pranic powers. They're called indriyas. So these indriyas are power up the senses. And these indriyas allow you to see even in other planes of existence. They allow you to perceive. So they are what we call extrasensory perception, ESP. Those are soul powers. So that's one part of it, to go deeper into the awareness of your soul powers. And the other part of it <laughs> is understanding and appreciating the animal creature that you live in, that's your vehicle. The human body, the human creature, and the human experience, understanding it. And if you stay more in your emotional being, and more in your mental being. You will not understand that fully. You have to go to the belly, to the sacral, and to the root to really, truly understand the human experience. So much so that Patanjali said that if you were to meditate on the belly energy, he calls it Nabhi Chakra, that if you were to meditate upon that, the the awareness of the, the body will deepen. You will become more conscious of the body's intelligence and the body communication. And the sequel chakra is mainly drive to drive the, the sexual energy. But the sexual energy is a human instinct. And the, and the root is so grounding us in the body, grounding the soul in the body. So these three lower chakras are really extremely important in understanding the human experience. So see how important it is to know yourself, on one hand to know your spiritual being, and on the other hand to understand the human creature. So these are, these are completely required. And I'm going to stay with you, those of you who really want to learn. I'm going to stay with you until you can fully appreciate this as your own experience. So let's make this a little bit practical. If you were to come into deeper self-awareness, just witnessing, just observing, observing, how do you how do you experience yourself? Do you feel an energy being manifesting in the body? Do you feel that your head is full of mental power? Not just brain power, but mental power, the power to to operate the brain. Do you feel do you feel the chakra in the brain? That's the power center. Do you feel the, the brow chakra that operates that front brain? Do you feel the crown chakra? that brings you into infinite consciousness and witnessing? Do you feel the throat chakra, the energy behind speech? Do you feel the heart chakra, the energy behind love? Do you feel the gut chakra, the energy behind digestion and the nervous system of the, of the gut? Do you feel um, the sacral chakra, the energy behind sexuality? And do you feel the root chakra, that is way down to the perineum area and grounds you in the body or influences the, the human skeletal system. Do you feel those? Because if you, if you don't, then the opportunity is to become awakened to them. And the more you stay in my energy, the more you stay in my guidance, 
And when I say my, I mean the connection to the, the energy of the masters, the tradition, the gurus. And do you feel the human body, do you feel the human body as apart from you, different to you, distinct to you, or from you? Do you feel that? So this is the kind of awareness you need to build so that you can differentiate or discriminate between soul awareness and body awareness. This is extremely important to keep on practicing this, to keep on observing it, to keep on witnessing until you catch it. Because even as I speak to you using a voice, I'm aware of the power behind the voice. And the more you listen to my voice, the more you can become awakened to your own voice power. I don't give you anything. I simply inspire you by my energy and presence to wake up to your own power. The power is within you as much as it is within me. We are all conduits of that infinite power of the universe and that is awesome just to think just to think that the power behind my mind is infinite, the power behind my heart is infinite, the power behind my God is infinite the power that drives my sexuality is infinite, the power that roots me to the body is infinite each one has infinite power the body doesn't define the power, the soul does and the soul is held in infinite power When I breathe, I, I can feel the gross air going to the lungs, but I feel pranic power, the prana behind the in-breath and the prana behind the out-breath. So the awakening to this power is extremely important. That's why apprenticeship is important, discipleship is important, studentship is important. But you cannot take this lightly. When you have a master, when you have a guide, appreciate every word, appreciate every instruction, and work hard to become like the guide, like the master, to be in oneness with them. So it's extremely, extremely important to understand these two parts of us the spiritual being and the human experience the two parts of us for me it's a tremendous joy that I, that I can activate my brain fully and so can you and the body has enormous intelligence in its DNA its genome enormous intelligence if you have management over this DNA, you can practic practically make the body do anything. You can make it live without food. You can develop greater power within the body. You can take it to the extent. You can take it to its furthest limit. And that's what happens as the, as the yugas uh, come. We learn more and more of how to deepen our spiritual power. But you know, with... <laughs> With knowledge also comes the responsibility for protecting that power. And that's why it, this is the age where it's dangerous to have too much power. So the divine, the divine protects, uh, protects us from those who try to go deeper into this power without full uh, responsibility. Or discipline. But only those who who stay in the good path can can move furthest. So let me take you into a little more meditative awareness. I can al already feel that you are you're going there. So with eyes open or with eyes close if you can do it.
just stay in that beautiful space of silence. Don't let thoughts disturb you. And just observe the whole human experience. Observe that there is a, a part of you that is lighter, that feels more buoyant, that feels more than the body. That lightness of being, that floatiness of being. When you open your heart to love and you open up your mind to be silent. And just let your hands float and your head be light, like it's being suspended. You will actually begin to feel more of your soul awareness, the heart and the mind space. And just breathe into that. With a rhythmic breath. And with being conscious of the breathing. And just follow the rhythm of the breath until you begin to feel it's almost automatic. And then and begin to become aware of the breath in rhythm with the movements of your hands. Or the breath and rhythm with the in breath and out breath. In breath, pause, out breath, pause. And like I always say, wait for the body to inform you to breathe. Stay in the subtle realm until the body wants to breathe. In those pauses, you're staying in the subtle realm. And energy awareness until the body wants you to breathe again. Stay in that awareness with every in breath and every out breath. Observe how stresses go away. Observe how the, the body feels more in a buzz of vitality. Observe how the heart, the organ of the heart relaxes. Observe how the mind becomes more quiet and peaceful. It's more parasympathetic mode of the nervous system. The more of rest and restoration mode. And the more relaxed your brain becomes. Can you feel the Manas Chakra with me? Can you feel that pulsation at the center of the eyebrows, energy pulsation? Can you breathe in it with the awareness of the entire spinal column so that you can do spinal recharging? Can you feel a depth of silence in the mind, how beautiful it is? So this is soul awareness. If you want to come into body awareness, then go down to the belly and become more conscious of the gross breath. Even though you may use ujjayi, the ocean sounding breath, just open it up to just to bring in more gross breath. Open up the belly to breathe until you can feel very comfortable with belly breathing and belly awareness. And then you'll understand more what it means to be in the body and to feel the body energetically. Now when you begin to feel that, go a little lower down to the sacral and the root. And explore there.
Sequel is a center of fertility, a center of reproductive power, a nourishing center of vitality, like the heart. I love to breathe into the sacral and feel what it does to the body. It brings you into a very, what I may call, sweet body feeling. And then you go right on to the root. Yeah, that breathing into the sacral area tames the sacral chakra, the primal instinct of the body. So though you can feel sexual power, you're not driven to satisfy it humanly, but you're driven to energize the area and to keep the body more healthy. And if you come down to your root and just hold the breath down in the root, just tense the glutes so you can get more into glutes awareness and also the thighs and calves and feet. You just, when you hold the breath in the perineum area, in the Muladhara Chakra, you hold the body in muscular tension. It feels so nice. And so much more into the body. In fact, I hold the entire body <laughs> in that muscular tension and it feels beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It makes the creature ready to act, to move the human body. Now I feel awesome, so I know that in the, this meditation we were also producing the feel-good chemicals in the body, the neurotransmitters, like dopamine, like serotonin, like oxytocin. And the breath is awesome. I'm totally enjoying the breath. where breath becomes a joy. Where living the human experience becomes a joy. When nourishing the body from the inner space becomes a joy. So this is a different kind of nourishment as apart from food, physical nourishment. This is pranic nourishment. Stay with me in this beautiful space. of experiencing total well-being, soul and body, body and soul. I'm sure you can feel the oneness or togetherness in being. And here I will close with a prayer to wish you an awesome day. Om Sahana Vavatu. May we be protected together. Sahana Bhunaktu. 
May we be nourished together. Sahaviryam Karavavahe. May we be strengthened together. Tejasvina Vaditamas too. May our knowledge be full of goodness, of light. Ma Vidvishavahe. And may we always stay united in the divine, beyond personality differences. Om Shanti. Peace. Shanti. Peace. Shanti. Peace. So with this, I want to wish you all an awesome day. A joy being with you today. So have a wonderful week, everyone. My soul bows to you.